We'll continue our discussion about Hazos, and we said that on Yom Kippur, there are eight Hazos, a series of eight Hazos, one on top of the other as it goes down in a row. And this happens in the Kodesh Kedoshim, and it's called Bein Abadim, between the two poles that are attached to the arm. So the Kohen Kodol is standing in the Kodesh Kedoshim, at the time that he dips his finger into the dam and he does the hazos. Now, there's a machlokas we shown him, at least according to some, whether or not the Kohen Gadol has to stand exactly at that spot, Beinat Bad, and do the hazos from there, or anywhere in the Kodesh Kadoshim, as long as he is machavin the hazos, Keneged Beinat Bad. So we're up to now good days. And the Gemara says that Hazos power of Sarshi Yomaki Purim Kenegid Aparochas. So now we're talking about the Hazos outside the Kodesh Kadoshim in the Hechal. And the Hazos have to be on Yom Kippur Kenegid Aparochas. Is there the Kohen, the Kohen Godel, has to stand. Lifnim mina mizbeach apnim. Right, we're talking about the heichal, and the heichal goes from east to west, and there's a mizbeach, what we call the mizbeach apnimi, the mizbeach azov in the in the heichal, and the kohen gadol has to stand beyond the mizbeach, meaning he goes towards the west. He's standing in the direction of the kodesh kadosh. We have a question as to whether we pass him like that. Now, the Azza on the Mizbech HaPnimi are the Azza, so the Par Vesor Shal Yom HaKippurim. And not only that, there are other Chatos Pnimios which require Hazza on the Mizbech HaPnimi. Now, when he puts the Dam, by first dipping his finger into the dam, and then he does that saw, mina etzba. Is it a zorekes adam? Does he dip his finger into the dam and then he throws the dam from his finger onto his back? Oh, benesina. Meaning he has to take his finger with the dam and he has to smear it onto the top of the mizbech. Now, we always have to emphasize in all these hazos, whether it's the hazos in the Heichal vis-a-vis the Parochas or the hazos in the Kodesh Kedoshim vis-a-vis the Kapores, in all cases, it's only the direction. The Dam doesn't go onto the Parochas or onto the Kapores. Yesh mi chukosav, chabazos par v'sor shal yom ha-kippurim ala Parochas im noga ha-dam b'parochas posu. There's even a sheet of the Gvur Sari, he's of the opinion that it's not just an exemption and the Kohen Godel is not required to hit the parochas, but he's not allowed to hit the parochas. And if the Dam touches the parochas, then he's got to redo the Hazos. It's completely null and void. Now on both sides, we start a slightly new topic within Dam, and that's called Shvichas Shirayim. After the Kohen finished the four major avodos with Zrika Saddam, now he takes the Mizrak in his right hand, and there are vestiges left over Dam in the Mizrak. And that Dam in the Klishars is called, is called Shirayim. And he takes the Shirayim and he pours them on the Yisod. Now here, he says, Shofchan legag ha-Yisod. So the Yisod, which is the jutting out Amma on the bottom of the Mizbeach, like the base, you could call it, it has a gag to it, right? It's the top part, as opposed to the sides. And that's where he has to pour the Shirai. And now we get to the major Machlokas Tanoim in the Sugya 
in Zvachim Nun Beis. Shvich Hashirayim, is it critical? Without it, there's no kapara, or is it only a chova and a mitzvah? According to one opinion in the Tanoim, Shvich Hashirayim Akeves Es Kapara. Without pouring the Shirayim, there's no kapara. According to the second opinion, the Zrika, as the culmination of the Avodo, starting with Shrita, has already clinched the Kapara, the Karman. He has the Kapara, and he doesn't have to replace the Karman, even if there was no Shvicha Shirayim. It means that Shvicha Shirayim is a mitzvah, it's an embellishment, it's an add on, but it's not critical. And the Bailim were already Yotze, they Chova. They achieved the kapar, the karma with Zrika Saddam, even in the absence of Shvi Hashira. La Locha, Shvi Hashira and Eno Makeris. And here we have Machlokas Rishon. Mitzvah ala koin la hashi adam be klishores. Kedei lekayim mitzvah shvicha shirayim or mitzvah sa shvicha im nishar dam mitzvah lishma. Does the koin, hopefully, Don, this will be relevant to you. Do you have to deliberately leave over some dam so that you can be makayim the mitzvah shvicha shirayim or shvicha shirayim only? Obligates a coin if the Rashi rhyme, right? if he used up all the dam for the Zrika, he doesn't have to deliberately engineer it so that he has a leftover dam in the Mizrach, in the Klichares. He can use freely all the dam. And if there's no Shvika Shirayim, fine. Again, this only makes sense if we paskin, which we do, that Shvika Shirayim ain't my Kevin's. It's not a separate avod of Shvika Shirayim. In event that there are Shirayim, then you have mitzvah shvicha. It reminds me of tzitzis. If you have a, cor- a four-cornered beged, you chayim in tzitzis. In shchita, you have an animal, you want to eat the meat, then you do the shchita. You have shirayim, you have to do shvicha shirayim. The Ramam shita is that there are three karbanas that don't have a, any requirement to shvicha shirayim, and they are Bukhar, Meiser, and Pesach. Now, the Yisod will surround the Mizbech on three out of four sides. So let's take, for example, the west side is a Yisod Hamarovi, or on the south side is Yisod Hajrovi. And here we have a machlokis rishonin of a tanoim as to where which is sowed does the coin have to do the shvicha shirayim? Is it on the maravi or on the drog? And la lochui paskin that in karbonos where the zrika is in the mizbeach achitzon, which is ninety nine percent of the karbonos, shofet has adam li sowed drog. And why is that? When the Kohen comes down from the Mizbeach, after he finishes his avoda, he goes down the Keresh. I'm sorry, the Keresh. And the Keresh will bring him to the Yisodromi. When he comes down the Keresh, that's the Tzad HaSomoch, Liri Dosim, and the Keresh is Bitzad Dorom. And we have a principle called Eino Vrimala Mitzvah, meaning at your first opportune moment, you fulfill the mitzvah. So when he comes down the Kevesh, he ends up at the Yisod Hadromi. That's where he does the Shri Hashrat. Don't delay until you get to the Yisod Amarov. That's all with regard to the Mizbeh HaChitza. Ach, Bechatos, HaPnim Yitzhazos, Don Behechal. Now we're shifting from the Azora into the Hechal. And we're dealing with Chatos Primios, and the Azoras Dam is inside the Hechal. Then for sure it's Yisod Barov. Shticha Shirayim Min 
who be Sodom Arov, Domon be Sodom Arov, Shebo, Pogea Hakoim, Trilo be Tsioso, me Pesra Hechal, Liachar Azos, Dam, Fech. When the Kohen leaves the Hechal, he first encounters the Yisod HaDrom. Now keep in mind that even in Echatos Primis, where the Hazos HaDam is in the Hechal, but the Shvich HaShirayim is in the Mizbeach HaChitzon. All Shvich HaZdom is in the Mizbeach HaNechoshes. But when the Kohen finishes with his Hazos in the Hechal, in Chatos Pnimius, where does he come out? Where does he encounter? On which side of the Mizbech does he encounter the Yisod? The answer is Yisod Hamarov. Okay. So we're finished now our discussion about Dam. And now we're going to talk about what's called Hefshed. The Achar Zrika, after the coin did the Zrika, Yochol Haskil the Hefshed Hakarb. He can already begin Hefshed, which means to remove the hide, the skin of the animal. Then he goes on to what's called Nituach Bad Bach. Nituach means that in preparing the limbs of the animal for Haktar al Gabi Mizbeach, he now does Nituach. He uh, surgically removes, you know, separates one segment, one limb from the other. And then there's something called Hadoch. Right, the Mizbech should not be getting the, the kitschkis of the animal as in the state that you remove it from, you know, it's full of perish and all sorts of different stuff. So there's hadocha to rinse the innards of the animal before your makter al gabi Mizbech. Now, how do we classify hefshek, nituach, and hadocha? We classify them as avoda, each one, and therefore we require a coin. Or is this secondary? It's not really an avoda. We have four major avodos, and the coin will take the bosar and put it on the Mizbeach Haktara. But in preparing the bosar for Haktara, Do we require a coin? He says, Avodas ha-hefshek v'anituach v'adocha naseis al yidei zorit. We don't need a coin. This is not an avod. Umikom ha-coin. It's already a halach of kvod ha Kvod HaMizbeach, are you nasos al yidei zarim miuchasen? You have a non coin, but he's miuchas. He knows exactly, you know, who his parents, his father, and his grandfather, and so forth. Now, we said that Hefshet can be implemented even by a Zah. It's got to be a Miuchas, but a Zah. Where is this taking place? In the Azor, they set up Shulchanos, special designated tables for the purpose of Hefshet. After the Hefshet is completed,
And again, in order to do half shape, they use like a rotary, like a spit. You remember the old time barbecues? And Poloes a carbon the avir, the carbon was suspended in air, you know, like the Eshkolos of the Moroccan. Al Amudim Shahayusham. Amudim Hayukvuim Shah. So here we'd have to go back to the pictures, the drawings, to see where the Shulchanos and the Amudim was situated. And then he writes, Ubahem, Vavim. On these Abudim, there were hooks. Vayimokvim, Esakarban, Beregalasmoli. They would pierce into the left leg of the carbon, Vitolim Benekev. And once they open up a cavity, they could hang up the carbon from this neck. I, I suspect that the reason why they're using the left leg is because the right always has more cover. And since you're using this hole in order to be taller than the animal, you don't want to mess around with the right side. I don't know if that's true. also below A shar is a very large animal, and it's very hard to orchestrate that the animal is hanging from a hook, and then you do the half shade and you remove the skin, the hides of the animal. Very difficult in the case of shar. Just you put it straight onto the shulchan, and from there will be mafshitio. In Hefshe Demar Betora Legabe Carbon Ola, the sheet is a ram should call a carbon as good to be hat as a name is my sheet in SR Habos. So even though the mitzvah of Hefshe is written in the Torah in the context of Ola, the Ramam expands it. To all carbonos except for chatos nimios. Now, in the case of Ola, basically everything is going to go on to the Mizbeach because an Ola is Kulo Kolio, Chutzmi Rosha. And I suspect that this roadshow has to do with covered to the Mizbeach. But let's see. He has a footnote here, Reish Chav Zion. Ah, he says, Harosh Mukhtar Im Oro. So it's not that we're excluding the rush from Hefshade because the rush is not going to go on the Mizbeh. That's a mistake. The rush will go on the Mizbeh, but with its R. There's no din of Hefshade on the R, uh, on the rush. So all that is true of an Ola. Now, Bashar Karbonos, where there's only Akhtar on the Murim, so here we have a great machlokas about hefshet. 
One man, the Yomer says that Hefshed is Ad HaChazen, until the cavity of his chest. Why? Because all I need is to remove the Emurim of the carbon. If I do have uh, the Hefshed up to the Chazer, then I can remove whatever I need for Aktaras Emurim through that opening in the Chazer. He says that in sequence, you have to re we require that the the, the hefshev, which we said is up until the chaza, take place before the afshotas or. Second, let me take a minute here to just relocate. So again, in a case of a carbon ola where we're removing everything, with the exception of the rush that's going to have Akhtar with the R, so now we have to do a major Akshata that includes and encompasses the entire animal. But in Shar Karbonos, where all we need is to remove some of the Kishkas for the Emurim that have Akhtar, then the hafshata will go until that cavity in the chest of the animal, and that will give him enough of the cavity through which he can remove all the murim that he has to remove for the purpose of Akhtar. So he needs number one, hafshata sa'or ad hachaza, and then hotsas ha'imurim. Now, why are we being so careful? to guarantee that the hafshata ad was complete before he removes the emurim. Kedesh el yidbeku be'emurim nimeit semer me'ar ha'karmon. So the high, the skin of the karmon has, has semer. It has, uh, you know, wool or different fibers. And we want to guarantee that the emurim that we're going to burn on the Mizbech should have no Saros on you know none of these um, of nimim the fibers of wool etc they have to be removed and therefore we have to wait for the Amur to take out the emurim until we finish the Sa'or. Once we have afshat Sa'or, then we can guarantee that none of the nime at semer got mixed up with the emurim. So we get pure unadulterated emurim. That go on in this bit. Facto. Put me carbon pesa. Shemafshit in esculo. So we say that in all carbonos other than a carbon ola, the hafshat is up until the chazan. And that's sufficient for hafshat. But not in the case of pesa. I'm not sure why. I, I, I suspect that the Torah went out of its way to equate carbon pesach with the carbon ola, sort of like to upgrade the status of the carbon pesach.
Now, what happens to the R? You've skinned the animal. What do you do with the skins? If it's kachi kachim, then it goes to the coin. And that's a way in which Klal Yisrael could recognize and express gratitude to the Kohanim for all the work that they put in. So we give them the Oros. And that's worth something on the market. Kachim Kalim Lebaim. Interesting. Even though in Kachim Kalim should be gratitude to the Kohen for doing the Avodah, but nevertheless, there's another overriding halachic consideration that's Bailus. And in the case of Kachim Kalim, the Bailim own the carbon. Anything that the coin gets is out of the gra gracious, kindness, magnanimity, magnanimous action of the owner of the carb. But she cuts and the violin get nothing from the carb. Nothing. All of the coin and don't get anything. But if it's chakas, asham, or, or um, what did I leave out? Or chatos, or chatos in Oshem, then the coin is really the bilim of the bossa because the Israel gets nothing from the bossa. But if it's a carbon shlamim, then the bilim get to eat the bossa. And as far as the oris is concerned, it's theirs. Now that's as far as half shot. And now we talk about Nitua. And we're dissecting the carbon. In the case of an Ola, we dissect it into 10 different parts. He doesn't tell you about other carbonos. That's in a great carbon Ola. Now we get to our dog. The carbon ola, madichim es hakeres, the es hakerev, the es hakirayim, the mind. So there are three parts of the innards of the animal, in the case of an ola, which require a dof. And they are keres, kerev, and kraim. Now there's another part of the innards of the animal, which is called kirbayin. Kirbayin. So we had kerev before, but it wasn't clear to us the following in the case of kirbayin. That ain't medichro so pochos mishlosha pa'am. The kirbayin which are the real kishkas of the animal, they're full of all sorts of stuff, there we require not one adokha, not two, but three adokhas. Mibnei shehein meluchlachos harbe. There's a lot of stuff that has to be cleaned off. Now we said that adokha requires mayim. Sharmashkim enam ksherim ladokha. The job that the Mayim will do when you rinse something off in water cannot be achieved by other match, other, other beverages, other liquids. And not only that, make kiar that have a special sanctity, it would be lowering or insulting the Kedusha, the sanctity of make kiar if you were to use it for Hadacha, to rinse off the junk and the repulsive garbage. Now, where does Hadoch have to take place? Hakeres, which is the insides, the intestines, is Hadoch should be done in the Lishka Samadich. They had a special chamber where they did Hadoch. But that's only as far as Hadokha Rishona. Right? We said in the case of Kirbayim, he needs three Hadokhas. He says, after he does the first Hadokha, 
על שולחנוס של שייש, הנמצאוס באזורה בין העמוד. So although the first Hadocha is implemented in the Lishkas Amadichim, now we assume that most of the garbage has been removed, has been washed away, but nevertheless there's still some left of Lichluch. We've got to do a second and a third Hadocha. Is those two Hadochos, the last two, can take place on the Shulchanos. You don't have to bring them back or achieve that inside the chambers. Well, the second and third adocha will, will be implemented on the Shulchanos. He writes here, the Shulchanos are made of shayish, marble. And they are located in the Azara, Bein HaMudin. Yesh mi shekosav, shelogak bi ola, elegam vishar zvachim, medichem es hachelev asher ala kerbayim. Why? Shehu min hami emurim hanik torim. So until now, we said that Hadbacha was limited to three, to Keres, Erev, and Karayim. Now, we're expanding it to Chelev, Asher Ala Kirvayim. Why? Because anything that requires Haktara and is considered a Murim has to first be thoroughly rinsed before you put it on the Mizbeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he doesn't clarify this, but there are two types or categories of chelev. He's talking about the chelev asher al hakirbayim. There's other chelev, which for sure we would not bring on the Mizbeah because we have a principle of mimashki Yisrael men amutu b'fifa. You can't eat chelev. So I don't know. I wish he would have gone into detail. He just says chelev asher al hakirbayim. All right, I think we'll stop here. Now I have Yud Beis. Seems that the last page I have here is Yud Beis. Do you have steam beyond Yud Beis? You have a you have an extra copy from the room? that you don't need. I, mean, I don't want to take no, care no, of it. Me... All right. Thank you.